Zero Trust World 2024. Cybersecurity is everyone's business, but for IT professionals, it's critical. Over three days, you'll get the cybersecurity education that you need. We'll show you the latest threats and hacking techniques, and how to harden your environment and commonly weaponized applications like RMS and Office 365. Really informative. I, did, I actually just went to the Metasploit lab. They were showing us how to use like an SMB exploit, which is pretty cool. Hacking labs are amazing, and actually uh, seeing how you can do things that will fix the problem. Definitely recommend the event. I mean, the hacking labs are fantastic. Definitely learned a lot. Not only will you have an educational and enjoyable experience, you'll get actual insights to take back to your organization to better your security. Zero Trust World is your all access pass to the state of default denial. Register today to join us in Orlando this February for Zero Trust World 2024. Visit ThreatLocker.com to reserve your pass now. Welcome today, we're on our third attempt of the pineapple webinar and the third attempt, which is probably going to fail. However, Rob Allen is not going to get the blame here. Ivan and his team are going to get the blame. So just to put a little bit of history on this is where a oh, pineapple is a device to help take over the Wi-Fi, a device that we will never use again after today. I see we have a whole team working on better tools. And the idea is, is you can do cool things like you can do deauthorization attacks, you can uh, broadcast an SSID and get people to connect to it. You can give an evil portal and connect, collect people's credentials. Really great if you want to steal credit card numbers on a plane. Really, really cool tool, uh, only a little bit shit. So um, <laughs> now the the idea is... That like Sorry, can, can we also give people the rest of the background, Danny, the rest of the history, which is... So we're, we're dealing today with my two least favorite things, one being pineapple and two being drones. The reason I hate pineapples is because somebody who may or may not be on this call, insisted that we do a live demonstration last year at Zero Trust World, which involved pineapples and drones and everything else. Now, it didn't work, okay? But, and this is very important for the people to know, everybody thought it didn't work. And I stood on stage going, oh my God, this didn't work. But it did manage to capture a couple of credentials. Now, I just wanted to share with the people the credentials that it did capture. Okay, oh, you, oh, you're gonna put some bullshit credentials in here. This yeah. is what the pineapple captured. Okay, <laughs> danielthreatlocker.com password feet lover 69. Okay, now I'm not saying that your password is currently feet lover 69, but the pineapple captured it and the pineapple does not lie. Yeah, so I just wanted to put that out there. And um, also, just to give people the rest of the why I hate this webinar today with all of my heart drones, right? I have a drone, I love drones, I play with drones. Okay. You had a drone. You had a drone. I had, well, yeah, technically I both had and have a drone. Now, the reason I had a drone is because somebody asked me to do a very nice picture of all of the staff when they were all oh, here. Oh, wait, 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 wait there. No, wait, wait there. Just to be clear, nobody asked you to do a nice picture. No, we no, I was drone. asked. Special drone. I was asked. Yeah, and no, I was asked. You decided to take a second picture of the whole I, I duly obliged because I'm that kind of guy. And I have my drone flying outside. I've never had a difficulty or a problem with the drone flying away or doing anything bold. So I have my drone flying. And then as it took off, it kind of went out a little bit over the beautiful lake that we've got outside the office here. And it updated the home point to what I knew was the middle of the lake. But I went, look, I've never had a drone go missing before. I'd never lost connection before. So it'll be fine. What's the worst that can happen? Then after taking a few pictures, all of a sudden my drone stopped talking to me. Okay, and it started going very, very, very slowly, 
to the home point, which, as I mentioned, was the middle of the lake, and proceeded to hang there, sadly, for a good 15 minutes until the battery died, at which point it descended slowly and sadly into said lake. Never to be recovered. Ne never to be recovered. Now, people have tried. I have literally people, I have pictures of staff on boats with nets who have tried to recover said drone. Um, but unfortunately, I failed. So yes, that is the reason. I hate today's webinar. I hate drones. I hate pineapples. Okay, to, to, make, to make the situation worse is what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about the pineapple. We're going to show you some things on the pineapple. And we're going to, well, we're going to attempt to take over a Wi-Fi SSID, which is difficult for lots of reasons. One is we're going to do it from outside the window. And the other thing is yesterday we did it like 15 times and it worked perfectly. And we just tried it again and it didn't work. <laughs> so, and we just tried it 15 times before the webinar and it didn't work. So we've got Ivan and the rest of the Threat Locker Ops team working in the background, trying to make it work. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to talk a little about what it is and what a pineapple is. So pineapple is a Wi-Fi essentially hacking device. It allows you to broadcast SSIDs, take over Wi-Fis. Uh, you can put up evil portals. So you could essentially go to a hotel, broadcast, the hotel name i won't say any hotel obviously and when people connect it'll say hey please put your credit card in to connect to the wi-fi and it'll steal your data you can do the same on a plane however i'm not sure i want to be forty thousand feet in the air with a pineapple turned on so maybe i wouldn't recommend that <laughs> so um but you can use it to collect details and take over do de authored hacks on the wi-fi's they're about 200 bucks on hat five they aren't very good tools to be honest essentially the way they work is it's a cheap uh set of hacking tools for Wi-Fi built into a simple box, a bit like a rubber ducky or a bash a bunny or a um, flipper device. However, it seems to be the most unreliable of them all, hence why we always have problems. However, if you want to play around with it, there's a couple of things you're going to need. The idea is in order to take over someone's Wi-Fi and intercept the connection, first, you need to broadcast the same SSID. And second, um, you need to be closer to them than their wireless access point. And third, you need to de-auth their current wireless access point. So it will reconnect to your wireless access point. So three things you require in order to take over. So if you want to take over, say, Danny's Wi-Fi, the CEO of ThreatLocker, you need to get closer to him than his current access point, which is pretty close because it's just outside my office. Um, and you need to do those three things. However, it also won't work because I use a cable. So, because <laughs> Wi-Fi is just generally. But in this case, we're going to try a few different things. Now, in order to get closer, we have exhibit A, which is a drone. Um, let's see if I can find the model number of this drone because the drone has to be capable of lifting the Wi-Fi, uh, which it's is- It's a Mavic Pro 3, if I'm not much mistaken. Yeah, it's a, it was about two and a half thousand dollars. This one's a bit more expensive than the cheap ones that land in the lake, but- <laughs> Ouch, Danny, ouch. And just to be clear, this one was flying that day without incident. So- um, I blame that one. I, th I think it all got confused and I think that one is at fault. Yes, it, well, I think I think definitely it got confused. Um, but you also need to power the pineapple. So the pineapple needs power. And normally, if you're in an office, you put it on someone's desk, you take it in, you can connect it to a battery or you can connect it to a power outlet. So you don't actually have to fly a drone. It's just as easy to walk into the building and plug it in sometimes. And um, uh, and you need, but you need power. In this case, we need to get power three or four stories, four stories in the air at what twelve feet per story. So you know, forty feet in the air, let's say, maybe. 48 feet in the air, I guess. Depends how high we go on the, the window. Um, so this drone has a very special feature. It has a USB-C port, which you can actually power devices off, which is pretty cool. So what we've done here is we've actually connected our drone to our pineapple and we've, uh, sorry, we've connected our pineapple to our drone and we're powering off the pineapple. Now there's a few other things. The first time I tried this, I strapped the drone to the pineapple and I still have the paint missing from the wall and I took it off outside my office door. Now, these DJI drones come with a really cool feature called obstacle avoidance. It doesn't work with water, but obstacle avoidance. <laughs> um, and when you strap something to them, they do everything in their power to avoid said object. Um, and I had strapped it to the bottom. So it just kept flying upwards. <laughs> Until we hit the ceiling hit the wall and then nearly took off one of our marketing people's heads. So. <laughs> So um, there's a feature in there called obstacle voices. You need to go into the app before you turn it on and before you strap something to it and turn it off. So when you do take off the device, it's not going to go crazy trying to avoid the obstacle 
strapped to it. So make sure you do turn that off. Outside of that, it's a pretty simple drone and you, you plug it in and you let it go. Now, what we're going to do here is I'm going to hand it to our pilot, which seems to have gone missing. Do we know where our pilot's gone? Oh, our pilot's coming in now. So Henry, uh, who is our resident pilot here and uh, say hi, Henry, Leave over. He is, he, is, he is in charge of our digital marketing. He's going to go out and he's going to fly the drone. Um, pre preferably not into the lake. <laughs> so, uh, and he's going to take it off and he's going to see if he can get close enough to me that it actually broadcasts a signal. And then yeah. Ivan's going to connect to it and he's going to show some of the features of it if they work. Hopefully, hopefully. Uh, just a quick one, Danny, a couple of uh, questions. So first of all, no pressure, but John Spence has said, if this isn't flawless, we're done here. Yeah, John, I'm sorry. And <laughs> John, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna break it to you in advance. It's not gonna be flawless. Yeah. Uh, and also, Avi Solomon has asked, is that the bin on the credenza, the threat locker bin that's sponsored at airports? Yes, I have my own airport tray. Actually, we have about six of them in the office. So in Orlando Airport, we sponsored various things, including the security bins. And there are no RFID devices or wireless devices in our bins, I promise. <laughs> so if you go into Orlando Airport, so you can get this and there's actually about two or three different varieties of them. There's a gum girl one as well. Uh, so, but this is the one you see at the airport. I've never been given a bin by an airport before. I felt very special when they handed it to me. <laughs> I'm going to bring my own bin to every airport I travel to in the US and say, can I use my own? Um, so uh, Lu Lucy has said she can't wait to see one in a few weeks. So I'm presuming she's coming to uh, to Orlando to Zero Trust World. And Avi also said, I just got a picture from one of my team from the airport today with it. With a threat locker bin. Yes, mm -hmm. then there's also some signs and some other cool stuff going on there as well. But yeah, so it, and just while we're waiting for our drone to, to join us, hopefully it will soon. If you haven't already got your tickets for Zero Trust World, today is the last day that we'll be sending out the discount codes. If you want better than the discount code, there's two ways you can get them. Uh, they're going to be they're normally four hundred ninety five dollars. Uh, we're reducing them to two hundred ninety five dollars today with the discount code. It will come in the chat at some point uh, during the webinar. Uh, but there's a secret: you can get it free. There's two ways you can get it free. One is you go to Zero Trust World, you study how understand how to use Threatlock, understand all our products, and you take the Cyber Hero test. Now I can promise you. You will not pass the test if you do not go through ThreatLocker University. This happens every year. And I also highly recommend you go through ThreatLocker University before you go to Zero Trust World because we have a really cool after party that's supposed to have, although someone told me that there were some arguments with the hotel, like Jurassic Park Jeeps and DeLoreans and that at it. So and it's, a, it's a blockbuster party for those who remember the blockbuster store. Um, so that's going to be really cool. So what we hate is when you guys have to go and study because you want to get your ticket refunded. So please do the TLU before you come. The other way you can get a free ticket is answer the question that we asked right during the webinar or at the end of the webinar. Now, Zero Trust World, I'm going to do a little uh, promo of it now. We're waiting for this drone. It essentially is three days of hands-on cybersecurity experience. And that means everything from the red team size, where we're going to, oh, I can see the drone taking off there. The red team size, where we're actually going to show you how to use pineapples or fail at pineapples, probably how to use rubber duckies, how to use flipper devices, um, how to use Metasploit labs um, and how to write effective malware. There's a number of sessions. And we, well, the reason we're telling you that is because we want you to understand how to defend from it, but also how to harden your environment, like courses on how to deploy, successfully deploy whitelisting zero to end how to secure office 365 how to harden a windows server and then we got a great great bunch of speakers including mark rober if you don't know who he is he's a nasa engineer who likes to blow up glitter on youtube for people who steal porch pirates Annie, look behind you oh <laughs> i i feel very jason bornish and i'm gonna get shot or something oh there you go That's we cool. can't see you unfortunately you know what's even scarier I didn't What's check anything on my camera and suddenly someone else has recorded filming from inside. No, oh, with it, that's from the drone. I, I was like, someone's filming inside out, but they're not. That's a reflection. I was like, <laughs> I said, where did that camera come from in my office? It's not, it's a reflection off the building. See how close um, sorry, Danny, just one. Somebody did ask a good question. Paul Mack, he said, is, uh, he said, is, oh, is a promo, promo for one or two tags? Technically, it's for one. So basically, Oh, no, the, oh, the promo in the chat. You can you just use the code as many. It's just oh, okay. You yes. can use the code as many times as you want on the on, on in the chat. 
just just use it. Just one know. other thing to mention as well, Danny. So I quite a few people were interested, but they were they said it sounds very technical, zero trust world. Um, and is it of benefit for people other than techs to go to? So do you want to answer that or speak to that? So I, I think there's two areas. So it it's of a real benefit if you are trying to understand how to enhance your security business. The sessions, while there are very technical hands-on sessions, there are also less technical sessions explaining theory and explaining compliance, explaining, uh, you know, we've got our, our, our very own compliance guy now whose history is in previous XB, FBI uh, liaison to Interpol, I think, or during Grand somewhere. So we've got a lot of educational sessions as well that are a bit higher level, but then down in the weeds. Now, I will tell everyone, we see this every year. We ask everyone when they come in, which sessions are they more interested in? Everyone who's not technical ends up in the rubber ducky labs, <laughs> always. But yes, it is. It's not. It's we. Everyone in Threat Locker, technical and not technical, is dying to go. So it's it it has value for both at a very technical level or non technical level. If you have no interest in security and no interest in technology, then don't be there because that's not really worth it. And can I just say, do you know how I know the ducky sessions are always so popular? Because I've had my sessions up against the ducky sessions two years running. And there has been like five people in my sessions. Everybody's in the ducky sessions. That's how I know they're popular. Yeah, but they know that it feels not going to work because they're pineapples. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, Ivan, do you want to show us, have you managed to connect to this pineapple that's hovering spookily behind me? I have been able to connect to it. Oop, I'm on the wrong camera. Let me swap over. There we are. So I was able to connect to the pineapple that's behind you. The only issue is I'm not able to share the screen because the connection went out because I'm connected on my other machine wirelessly to that. But it's okay. I still managed to find a way to share my screen. Um, and yeah, I can, I can demonstrate a couple things in the uh, pineapple interface if you guys are okay with that. Yeah. So, I mean, do we want to talk about how we set up an evil portal first and what an evil portal is? Yeah, we can. So basically what an evil portal is is... When you're in a Starbucks, think about this. You're, you're at a Starbucks, right? And you're connecting to free Wi-Fi. You're in an airport and you're connecting to a free Wi-Fi. Basically, what the evil portal does is it impersonates that open Wi-Fi signal and allows us to create an interface that when you log into that captive portal, you guys seen it, right? You connect to the internet. It says, hey, before you use our internet, we need some information about you. Give us your email. Give us a password. Maybe create an account with our captive portal. So that's exactly what we're doing. We're standing up a captive portal and you're basically prompted, hey, log in through Google to be able to access our internet. And when you log in and you actually put in your information, instead of being redirected to Google, you actually forward that data straight to us. So then now the, the attacker, the hacker has access to your information. That's a form of data exfiltration that we use with the captive portals. Yeah, so here we have the scanning interface. So for some reason it's, let me start a scan again. For both, let me go scan, yep. But we do have previous handshakes here. So when you scan and you leave it scanning for a very long time, in a perfect scenario, let me refresh this. But in a perfect scenario, I will explain that hackers are scanning for minutes to hours and just waiting for connections to come through and handshakes. Handshakes essentially are that three-way TCP. It's kind of like a TCP handshake where you're authenticating into the server and the server says, hey, what's your username and your password or the, or the, password, or the, the password key to connect to the Wi-Fi. And once you authenticate, then the, the server says, okay, you're authenticated. Well, what we basically do is we disconnect a user when they're using a Wi-Fi, uh, basically a, a Wi-Fi signal, and we tell them, hey, re-authenticate. When they re-authenticate, we capture that handshake, and then we're able to take it offline into our own machine, and we're able to crack that password and actually see the password that that account has. So if you want me to demonstrate that, Danny, if that's okay with you, I can bring up that's iTerm fine. here. What I, I have two directories here. I have one called network, and I have another one called word list. So basically, I have a word list. It's this common word list. Everybody knows it. It's RockU. has hundreds of thousands of passwords. So what we do is we run a command called aircrack ng. And that command is going to allow me to basically iterate all those passwords that I have in the RockU. You might not be able to see it too well here. But this is aircrack ng. And I'm providing it a word list. The word list that I'm providing it is the RockU word list. And then right here, we have the handshake that we pulled off of. When we go over to handshakes, we have all these handshakes in the pineapple interface and we can go ahead and download them and we have a full uh, a few full uh basically full uh handshakes and what we do is we put it up against our basically our brute forcer and mm -hmm. we're able to actually get the password and here we see that the password for the rubber ducky hvac service is actually princess in spanish so it's princessa basically so yeah that's that's one way that hackers can 
basically just wait, capture that handshake, and then go off online, offline, and you know gain authority. They're doing a brute force that. against the shards there to see if they're valid using a word list. So another reason not to use words in your your Wi-Fi password. Um, um, just one thing that Stephen did mention, which is very true, which he said it's probably worth noting that an evil portal doesn't have access to your data. It just captures anything you submit on the fake captive portal. Facebook login, Google account, etc. It's quite scary to sorry. It's quite scary to say you connect to the evil portal that has all your data. It's not what's going on. No, it's not. It it's a man in the middle. It's basically an evil portal just is a method of harvesting credentials. It, it only works if you actually do put your credentials in. So now it is very easy because you think I'm on my phone, it popped up with the Google login. I'm used to typing my Google login on my phone and it's very easy to accidentally do that. However, if you're really, really vigilant, every time you put your password into a site, every time you that pop up on Wi-Fi and you, you check with there, what is the URL? Am I going there? It's very, very easy. And especially with HSTS um, where you can... Set, and every website should be set up like that now where you go to a website with SSL, basically it tells your browser, this website always needs SSL. So if there's a DNS poisoning in the middle, then always require it. Now, in, if it's redirected to a different URL, which is what it does with this evil portal, that's what's actually going to happen. You should, you're not going to know unless you pay attention to the URL that it's going to when you enter your credentials. Um, and it can't necessarily read your data. If there's an HTTPS connection in the middle, um, it's not going to be able to read your data unless it can get the private certs off your machine. The biggest yeah, risk... It's more about credential harvesting. It's, it's really about users' credentials or credit card harvesting if you're actually paying for the Wi-Fi, which is very, very easy to do. So, Ivan, do you want to show that evil portal very quickly? Yeah. So this is the evil portals interface. And then we can actually select which portal we want. I have Google login selected, but we can do Instagram login, Starbucks login, or Twitter login. That's off of a GitHub repository that we pulled down. But essentially, if you have a half-decent developer... He can create an interface that kind of looks like your common Starbucks login and it tricks people. In this case, I stood up a SSID called free Wi-Fi. Danny, do you see it on your end? There should be an SSID up called free Wi-Fi. I think you can probably connect to it. I can even connect to it on my phone and demonstrate it if you guys want. Okay, to. I'm going to see if I can see. I can see free Wi-Fi, but can I have my victim back? Because <laughs> if I connect, I'm not going to lose my internet, I assume. So and look, unfortunately, we, we have to play a game here where we're connected to bad Wi-Fi, so we have no internet. But here, essentially, this, um, or oh, it's actually saying it's connected to nothing. Oh, I guess that's just saying no internet. Um, so when I click on my Wi-Fi, I'm going to see how this works. Oh, it's just not saying it's connected right now. Uh, I mean, technically, we can broadcast this as anything. I don't know if this is going to work, but we can see. I can, can see. Can you Wi-Fi there? Uh, Rob, yeah, that's clear. Yeah, so you can, yeah. We can broadcast anything, so I can see the free Wi-Fi there. Uh, we could broadcast that as Hilton Honors or Starbucks or Threat Locker. And again, if we're closer to, I don't know how long this battery is going to uh, last, but if we're closer to the, it's taking a good while to connect. And then what we have here is we have a, it pops up with the MSFT redirect page, which is what happens when you connect to a free Wi-Fi. And that's just showing basically a Google login page. If I enter my credentials, that's going to steal the data. One other thing actually just to mention that they they can do is they can harvest Wi-Fi networks from devices that are around them looking for networks. And it was something that I wasn't aware of. And one of the reasons why my attempt at a pineapple demonstration at Zero Trust World failed was because I left it running in that mode, basically trying to pick up networks that were being looked for around it. it I don't think you're right on that, Rob. Five hundred networks. I don't think you're right on that. It doesn't look for what they're looking for. It looks for all the networks broadcasting in your area and remembers them. No, 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 no. It, do, it does right actually. There, uh, 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 when, when your phone is looking for Danny's network, it will. I, I think, do you want to weigh in on the back that? of there's a phone looking for Danny's network? No, the reason you got that from your networks is you walked down the Excel center in London with it. No, 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 no. It was a different event. It was in a hotel. There wasn't 500 networks in the vicinity. I'm I think we make a public bet for Sarah Trustworld on that. <laughs> the pineapple is going to keep haunting you. What do you I'm reckon, Ivan? Who's right? Make me start playing with pineapples. Does it scan again? networks and remember them, or does it look for what your phone's looking for? Oh, hang on a second. I don't, don't want to. Uh, Logs clients okay. beaconing for existing saved wireless networks, which is pretty much what I'm trying to say. We'll, we'll, we'll test this out at Zero Trust World. Yeah, um, it logs clients beaconing for existing saved networks. That's exactly the point. No, the, and the that's, why I, that's why I picked up 500 wireless, it is, wireless networks. It is saved networks, though. It, it does save networks beforehand and then broadcast. Because I was I was broadcasting networks from my home, like the SSIDs around me. 
I was broadcasting them in the office by accident the other day. So it is, it is. Oh, yes. Sorry. Can I just say, Danny, Stephen has also said categorically, Rob, you're right. Who's Stephen? Danny, did you? Somebody who's obviously correct and very wise. <laughs> did you put in the credentials for the evil course? Yeah, so da Danny Willers has said it does both in promiscuous mode. So that it, it is correct. Uh, so basically, I, your phone is beaconing and it picks up what it's beaconing for. I, I, get, I, I, I tried to log into the evil portal, but you know what just happened? The Wi Fi dropped. It doesn't let you use credentials. Class. That's the problem. It might be, yeah. Well, you know what the problem is? Th this Wi Fi, this pineapple, it's just garbage. Oh Oh Sorry, excuse me. What just happened? Did they just slam into the window? I don't know. <laughs> oh. Damn. There's no way that just <laughs> I guess Wi-Fi's dead now. <laughs> yeah, I I I have no. Yep. <laughs> How did I not break that window? Oh no! Right locker building two drones zero. <laughs> so oh, taking your oh. drone into that locker apparently isn't a good idea, and having your marketing person as your drone pilot—that's really bad. Yeah, no, that pineapple was gone. I can't even. I can't even connect to the interface anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tip number three: Do not fly into the window. <laughs> yeah, people are asking, did the drone fly into the window? It, yep. <laughs> did you hear that? Danny, you could hear oh, the other side of the building. Yeah, that was pretty loud. God. Um, okay, tip three, do not fly into the window. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Leonard just said, Leonard just asked, is that an attempted brute force attack? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> At least I know the glass is hurricane safe. Because, um, okay, so we no longer have an evil portal or a drone no. or a drone. <laughs> so, okay, so well, yeah, Abby, we're... Made, Abby made a suggestion, Danny, which is fishing rods from the rooftop next time. Yeah, maybe <laughs> that would be cheaper, it would definitely be cheaper, Abby. <laughs> okay, um, well, no more demonstrations on the pineapple, however, it is our mission to make a stable wireless device by zero trust world in three weeks time <laughs> that we can Ivan, you can do it my friend i believe oh, in you oh, yes. I, I, when i say it's our mission it's ivan and everyone else in that team's issue <laughs> to uh to make make that happen so we have another webinar this is the last technically in the zero trust world series if you want to find out all the cool stuff do come to zero trust world it's going to be really really fun um, and hopefully we will not crash a drone. <laughs> Danny Willers has said the threat locker drone fleet has been grounded permanently. <laughs> Maybe someone can order a new drone. Oh, do you know what this means, Danny? We're not going to be able to do it at Zero Trust World. Oh, no. I am ordering another drone right after this webinar. A um, couple of things while you're on, because we've got a little bit of extra time. Uh, threat locker did launch Threat Locker Ops out of beta last week, and uh, we also added community. I'm probably going to give use this time because I've got a little bit of time just to show you Threat Locker community because it's not just for ops. We're adding policies in about at 20 a day per uh, now. But let me do this while I'm in here. This is because I like to live dangerously. Now I'm going to go from the drone to 20 to log in as demo. Um, so if you haven't noticed, now I will give... Oh, interesting. Stephen Simons just mentioned a very good point, which is there is an enterprise, a, an enterprise pineapple? Yeah, that is true. There's an enterprise. Said if you want a solid and reliable pineapple, try the enterprise. I love mine, much beefier. So, okay. Can you see my screen there, Rob? I can see. Yes, I can. Okay, and we're going to answer some questions as well. But I do want to point out while we're in here, because we've got a few times. So, so we launched Threat Locker Ops. We do have some special deals, which ended on the first of, of the, today, I guess. Uh, but if you need to an extension on that, because you want to try some stuff out, please do. You should have a quote in your account. I did email all of our customers a quote. If you didn't get one, please reach out to your account manager. We have some specials on Ops. What Threat Locker Ops allows you to do is look for all known indicators of compromise, which means about 80% of compromises, because we can't know every indicator of compromise. So remember... Ops is supplementary. EDR should be supplementary to zero trust endpoint control. Because if you use zero plus endpoint controls, like allow listing, ring fencing, network controls, you're in a far better state than hoping you could detect everything. However, Ops allows you to supplement that 
um, either alongside or in replacement for your EDR or some of your other detection tools and look for known indicators of compromise. We are adding all of the policies for that are known indicators of compromise, everything from the MIDO attack framework to things like volume shadow copy is being disabled up to a new domain admin account created. Maybe someone runs IP scanner. I've got some of the policies here. Someone elevated a system tool. Someone tried to restart and disable safe mode. All of these are alerts. And what you can do with these alerts is you can create alerts into your SOC. And it, when you get an alert in your SOC, you can go into the SOC and you can see everything about it. And one of the cool things you can even do is integrate with things like Windows Defender to say, hey, Windows Defender detected a piece of malware. We can see details of the malware here. But also we can go into, we can go into Threat Locker and look at every file that's ran or been installed in the last X amount of time um, to see if there's any, that's what I'm looking for, to see if there's any known malware on the computer cross-referencing from virus total. Obviously, this is a little bit out of date. We can see all network traffic as well, any elevations, all storage, and everything that's happening on your machine from that alert. If we do find something is be happening bad, you can actually lock down the machine, which is much better than just isolating because it will stop all reads, write, deletes, registry changes file changes, and even execution of programs until you decide, decide it's safe or isolate it to remove it from the network. So new feature of Opsy, if you haven't tried out Ops, um, you know, check it out. Uh, you can also automatically remediate. So you can say things, for example, if something really bad happens, like maybe someone runs Mimi Cats, I'm going to automatically lock down the machine. Or maybe in this case, which please test this before you do it, it's actually one of our built-in Ops policies. You can say things like, um, if there's too many writes, in your environment, then lock down write access. So basically we enable a storage policy to lock down write access. Oh, I, I, my drones come back here. I want to see how bad this looks. Um, <laughs> in pieces. That looks a mess. Oh dear. That really does look a mess. Where's the battery? Oh, here. <laughs> <laughs> does it still power on? No, I'll try it. It's tanked. It's done. It's done. You think it's done? Oops. The camera is there. Um, Richard, oh, sorry, on the, subject, on the subject of realms, Richard did say, I hope you pay for the DJI Care refresh. Now, I'm pretty sure. I know I did, so I got my drone replaced. Did you? No. No, you did not. But I'm going to live perfectly with it. It's okay. <laughs> because I couldn't be bothered to fill in the form <laughs> to, to get it done. Um, the um, Yeah, so we have a lot of options here. In this case, we actually have a policy that says, hey, if there's more than 200 writes, then enable this storage policy, which blocks all writes. Now, we put this in place in Threat Locker, and someone didn't realize that our source control is a monitored folder, which it should be. However, when you compile something in Visual Studio, you get more than 200 writes in one compile. So our devs were not very happy when we shut them down. So when you do put policies like that, maybe just check them out and put them into just alert mode. You can say, just create an alert before you go and do anything automated like lockdown or rights. Um, what I wanted to show you actually was community because what we've done here with community is we're basically publishing policies for you to pre-use that you can choose. You can see them by products. You can see what they're doing. We're going to add ring fencing policies, configuration manager policies, storage policies. Um, for example, you could go through here and say, hey, I want to a policy that monitors if someone enables Windows Defender, which obviously I don't want to create a warning. I just want to create a, a benign alert. That means you can see it, but it's not going to actually pop up with an alert for you saying information, someone enabled Windows Defender. It gets the event log IDs. It tells you all the details in there. Maybe you want to do something a little bit simpler or a, bit, a little bit more complex. So if I say, I was trying to find something more complicated. Oh, this is one. So quite often when attackers get onto your network, what they'll do is they'll enable a group policy to store passwords in reversible encryption. This means they can essentially reverse engineer your passwords if they get into your database. So if they turn that on, that's typically a big indicator of compromise. Not difficult, you can monitor it using Windows Event Log ID, but we've pre-configured that, we've configured what to look for. So you just get a warning. It's much, much easier for you. Now with community, you can also subscribe to other people and you can contribute yourself. Now we don't show everything automatically because we don't want this to turn into a platform of garbage. So what we do is we allow you to go in here, have your own community identifier published to that. And, and if anyone is, and then you can also subscribe to other people. So if you're in a peer group of other IT managers um, or other MSPs, you can say, hey, guys, this is my community. You can use what I want. Of course, whenever you're adding something from the community, be really, really careful, especially if it's automatically actioning things. So if it's deleting items, 
be careful not to um also not deleting items but locking down automatic automatically isolating machines enabling storage policies make sure you put it in an alert mode first and check nothing comes into the response center like a week later before you go and lock it down if you want to find out more information you can do um do we have any other questions on the drone stuff or in general we do uh, yeah so Stephen mentioned there's also a bash bunny slash ducky script in the hack five repo that can be used in tandem with a pineapple to delete your existing save networks on a windows client and add your own ssid and psk as the only save network pairs really well with the pineapple whoever wrote it must be a really cool guy i'm guessing it might have been Stephen. anyway bash bunny payload is called pineapple connect windows um, Kevin asked a really good question. So how do we tell our clients about this, but keep it simple and explain what regular customers should be doing to keep themselves safe? I don't think it's about this. Uh, so I, I think the problem is, is there are a million threats in the world that you could possibly not comprehend. I think what the way we present things to clients, to non-technical clients, is often, I want to show you some things you didn't think about. And then I want to show you what you can do to harden your environment and make yourself more secure. Because the, the reality is, is what we're showing you here, we shouldn't be going, oh, how do I solve for that problem? But how do I make my environment less hackable? How do I make it harder for people to get in? And that could be, hey, we're going to use, make sure we have the latest encryption. Our Wi-Fi is a patch. We've got more Wi-Fi antennas. It could be that we have cable where we can use cable, uh, that our users are aware of training and also that they can't download untrusted software. We've got dual factor on our accounts because one of your users might accidentally put their password into that pineapple um, evil portal by mistake. So I think Showing your client, well, I think that's a really that's a really good point. I mean, I suppose in very simple terms, not all Wi-Fi is safe, right? So just because a Wi-Fi exists doesn't mean you should trust it by joining it. I think it would be a really good place to start. And um, the evil portal, the pop-ups again, just be cognizant of you. If you get an unexpected logon prompt from something like Google or Office three six five, and you haven't done anything to instigate it maybe think twice about putting your credentials into it. And look, the obvious answer with, with the the clients, it, it's it's trying to show them that look how easy this was. This is why mm -hmm. you need dual factor. Yeah, um, absolutely. And that was what I was going to say. Dual factor authentication will solve a lot of these problems. De demonstrating is a good way. I, I'd recommend not flying the drone into your client's windows. That might yeah, be no, don't do that. Don't yeah. do that. Someone asks, is the evil portal something that's built into the pineapple devices? Yes. And you can also create your own. Um, so it is built into the pineapple devices. Um, Jan has asked, I would guess the pineapple uses the same SSID and MAC address from target Wi-Fi access point. So if you have rogue access point detection in your infrastructure, you sh should get an alert about this attack. I would think so. Yeah, I believe so. We are using the same. Um, Jan mentioned as well, I'm pretty sure pineapple is useless against WPA-Enterprise slash 8021X because it doesn't use the four-way handshake. The authentication is against radio servers already encrypted. I'm going to assume you're right on that, Jan. I don't know if I, uh, so, and that's a good point because we couldn't get into ours, but we, but we, we were trying other ones. So I'm not entirely sure. But and now, if it's the first time somebody connects, I imagine it doesn't. Um, Stephen made a really, really good suggestion, and I was going to mention this, which is for public Wi-Fi, always on VPNs and branded off Office 365 logon pages. Most evil portals will be generic Office 365 looking. So if users are used to company branded logon pages, that would help. And that is a really good idea is company brand things like Office 365 logon pages. So if you get a generic one, it's going to look unusual and it's going to raise suspicion. Actually, that's one of the tips we put in Zero Trust World to how to secure your Office 365 environment last year was put your own logo on your Office 365. Not going to solve every problem, but definitely will solve some problems. So if you can do that, that's a good idea. Uh, Craig Moore did ask about uh, community. Are the communities, community submissions reviewed before posted for everyone or is that up to us to do? Okay, so we review ours. However, in order for you to see someone else's, you have to subscribe to their community. So we don't review them, but if we do get a complaint, we will. We can actually bar them from the community if people posting bad things. But also it's worth noting, you should review anything that's particularly, especially anything that's gonna take automatic action in your environment, something like a ring fencing policy. Uh, just, but it, when you subscribe to someone, you're subscribing and saying, I trust that person. 
Um, and we're not pushing things without you actively knowing that subscriber ID. So at some point we might allow people to publish generally, but at the moment, the only way you'll see another company's submissions is if you subscribe to their ID. And I'm sure there's going to be plenty of IDs posted out there on Reddit and social media networks and things like that. But again, be careful because you are taking data from and configurations from someone else. So you should review anything you get from anywhere else. Um, if we get complaints, of course, we're going to action it, but they're not community, open community. It's closed community to people you trust and your peers only. Stephen did make a valid point, which is it's easy for an adversary to get that branded login page by attempting to log in with a valid email. Uh, you don't even need a password. So it's a, it's a valid point if you're doing a targeted attack. Targeted okay. attacks, yes. It, not blanket attacks, it still helps. It's, yeah. it, it also, I think we give users too much credit. Users are just going to put their passwords in anyway. Kieran made a valid point, and I don't know if this has anything to do with that um, slight drone incident. He said, attempting deauth around drones will always result in failure in these demos. Probably best go back with a simpler demo that works. Most drones will immediately descend, or in this case, crash into a window, uh, if you deauth their Wi-Fi. The drone's not connected. I wonder, can we? so can we pin this on Ivan? Yeah, we'll blame Ivan. <laughs> 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 Okay, I, I, Adam, I, sorry, buddy. New drones on you. I'm I'm not paying for the drone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but I, I don't. The drone does actually connect to Wi-Fi, so it's using its own antenna. So deauth will not interfere with the drone's communication. However, also we've done these, uh, and beforehand we were running this exact. The Wi-Fi, the pineapples just never play ball. Full stop. Whether they're on a drone or not, uh, we we sit, literally had one sat at our desk for half an hour before, and it was working perfectly yesterday, and it just was not working today. Yeah, anything that's wireless is just generally so use everything that you can. So, okay, um, anything else you want to ask? Uh, did you purchase Apple Care? I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> if you again, if you haven't already booked tickets, I think they're going to go off sale soon. But please, you know, do come to Zero Trust World. It really is great. And also, they you get your PE credits or CPE credits. Sorry, CPE credits if you're required to do training credits uh, at Zero Trust World. There's quite a few of those credits go out there. In addition to that, or you get CPE credits and you'll learn a lot in those three days as well. It really is a good ed educational event. And my goal is of Zero Trust World every year is to send everyone who comes in a little bit more knowledgeable, a little bit smart, and a little bit better to defend themselves from cyber attacks because we're all better off if no one's getting hacked. If you haven't done a demo or a threat locker before and you'd like to see a full demo of our portal, or you'd like to come in and just do a demo of threat locker ops, you want to see more data, I'm going to ask someone in marketing to drop a, a demo link into the chat right away if they've got one. Um, you can book a demo there. Otherwise, you can go to threatlocker.com and book a demo. But come and look at ThreatLocker. If, you, if you've already done a demo at ThreatLocker and you want to book a demo for ops, just note in the notes, hey, I want to see ops. I want to see network control. These are really important components of ThreatLocker. Listen, everyone, I appreciate your time. And Rob, once again, thank you. Oh, do we want to show, have we got the picture, Spencer, of Rob's door now? If anyone didn't capture commercial, we got a special sign for Rob. No, I don't, I don't think anyone has. Spencer, can you share that? And we Actually, we had graphics make a whole image of Rob. The only thing is he's got a bit more hair. We, we got a whole pineapple. <laughs> Rob, we've made a whole mock-up of rubber ducky pineapple. <laughs> Listen, oh, at least, don't knock rubber duckies. At least rubber duckies work. Um, yeah. Del, Delvin, oh, sorry, Devlin has asked, is this video being recorded so we can create a GIF of the drone crash? <laughs> yes, and I'm sure someone in marketing is going to have that GIF by the end of it. But it will be recorded. <laughs> it will be emailed to everyone. Um, it will be on YouTube as well, I presume. Uh, Richard uh, Smithmeyer has said, I believe Wi-Fi can interfere with the connection between the controller and the drone. For example, the DCI or C2 controller has Wi-Fi wi -Fi capacity, but will deactivate the Wi-Fi when the drone is being operated? I, I, I think, by the way, looking at it, he was trying to straighten up the drone and went the wrong way. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. No, well, that, that, I don't that. think this was a Wi-Fi. I think this was a pilot Checks error. Out. Checks out. Okay. So Henry's buying a new drone. Yeah, we're, we're, we're blaming Henry, yes. It's Henry's <laughs> So, um, but yes, we will be making this recording available. And I'm just glad that I still have glass in my office window. And I feel a little bit more comfortable. Sounded like you would from here. It sounded like a car crashed into it. <laughs> yeah, it sounded pretty loud here. <laughs> um, so, I have to go in and see the drone now. So, yeah, it's it's pretty bad, man. It's sorry. Um, I should say I should. I want to go in and see the pieces of the drone. Yeah, the pieces of the drone. We're going to bury them one piece at a time. This is, like, this is the camera. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, the camera came off. Yeah. If anybody wants to buy drone parts, let us know. We might have a few available. What's the probability of getting the video from the SD card of it hitting the window? Quite high, I would imagine. Yeah. 
We're going to find out. Yeah, we are going to find out. Find out. <laughs> the battery looks well, a Yes, bit... anyway, Devlin, the answer to your question is the video will be on YouTube later. Okay. Anything else you want to ask, answer, Rob? I know there's a lot of questions here. So, No, no. Uh, sorry, uh, B Reed. Oh, sorry. B Reed, I'll take the smashed up MK7, though. Ha <laughs> ha. So I think uh, I think Stephen wants the smashed up um, pineapple. You know, I think we have that. We have Rob, that game. Robert has suggested that we should do a broken drone giveaway. <laughs> yeah, what, 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 instead of the instead of your what do you call that machine, Ivan? That big fancy machine we're giving away at Zero Trust World. Oh, the phone to own. Yeah, so we'll, we'll give the drone away instead. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's a better deal. <laughs> we we'll get that for second place. Whoever 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 breaks the machine second gets to own the drone. <laughs> We we could also have a, a competition where uh or for people to try and get my um drone from the lake. See if you can succeed where others have failed. Yeah, the good thing is my wow, this drone's light ones no actually. This my drone actually gets to to be have a proper burial. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's well, not a burial, it's just a burial at sea, a burial oh, at lake. Shelf here behind me as a reminder. <laughs> <laughs> How not to drive by a drone. Yeah, how not to drop, fly a drone. Yeah. And it wasn't me who crashed it this time. So, um, um, yeah, so Richard, as I said, video should still be good. I've crashed my fair share of drones and still have a video to memorialize my mistakes. Good to hear. I look I forward to seeing it. If we hadn't cut, turned off the motion sensors, it wouldn't have crashed. Yeah, and sorry, I think you did say that was rule number, so point number one when you're doing this is you have to turn off the motion sensors. So I, I think we can blame you actually because you're the one who said to turn them off. Right. We'll go with that, Rob. Yeah, happy. <laughs> so, well, listen, uh, everyone. I think we're we're about up on time now. Uh, hopefully, you guys. We see you at Zero Trust World. If not, you know, we see you on a demo. If you want to check out Ops, if you didn't get a quote or you want to speak to your account manager, we did have some special prices until the end of last month. They can share those with you, and it's it's quite a big discount as well for Threat Locker Ops, and that might save you in other areas as well, such as EDR or other detection tools on your endpoints. So, check out. Really good deal. <laughs> Avi has suggested submit to fail army. <laughs> Avi, if they don't, I will. Submit to who, sorry? Fail army. Fail army. It's, it's okay. a young people thing, Danny. You wouldn't know anything about it. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure you're older than me. So, and yeah, with, this, with, this, with this camera that marketing's given me, I look like a 12 year old boy, so I can get away. <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, we look forward to seeing you there. Again, if you didn't get your op stuff in your portal, please reach out to your camera manager. They'll get it. They'll extend it out a few days and uh, they give you a chance to kick the tires with it. And if you want to play around with community, just go to beta.threatlocker.com and you can play around with community in there. Again, if you're adding policies, please, most of the policies we add are just alerting policies, so they're not going to break anything. Uh, but if you are adding policies, especially if they're automatically disabling a storage policy or enabling a storage policy, just double check and put the alert on first for a few weeks or, to make sure nothing's going to break. I don't break things like Danny did. That's okay. Our dev team. I, <laughs> I, I said to the dev team, it's your fault. You made ops work. <laughs> That's uh, fair. Okay. Well, guys, thank you, Rob, again. Thank, thank you, you very Rob, much. Spencer and, and Ben. Thank you as always. Today. Bye-bye. Right. -bye.